Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, good night, like my beloved co-host Sebastian likes to start our debates. Welcome, welcome to todebate.net, your podcast of debates, to another episode, another 12-minute juicy debate. Sebastian, how are you doing? I'm good. Um, yes, I, I like to emphasize the good night because we want to make this experience intimate for our listeners. So go to your bed, lie down, listen to us. It's 12 minutes of debates plus an extra few minutes of joking and discussion and saying hello. So lie down, go to a peaceful place, sit down, whatever you prefer, and just enjoy the show today. Yeah, and afterwards, don't forget to go to the webpage and vote <laughs> for my side, because uh, after all, we are not doing that just for the feel-good aspect of it, do we? Right. This is uh, indeed a very lucrative business. It's, uh, <laughs> we're asking you to vote and then to uh, go to PayPal. And no, uh, no, this is a free debate. This is a free podcast. And it's still this way today. And we have to say we were not helped by our parents, were we, to try and kick off this podcast in any way, shape or form. Yeah, speak for yourself, Sebastian. Speak for yourself. <laughs> Why your parents helped you in, in in getting you the gear and the equipment for that, so that you could record this uh, podcast? If I would have taken everything they could have given me uh, in terms of inheritance, but no, my parents haven't had much. Oh, what a perfect transition! Yeah, well, wow, you're so good. Like every time you do this, I learn from the best. <laughs> <laughs> what? Well, because the motion today is inheritance money should be capped. That is what we're going to debate on today. And the reason why we came up with that debate motion is because the New York Times a few weeks ago came up with that special deep investigation on how Trump, yes, yet again, our dear friend Donald Trump, uh, has lied about uh, how he managed to be a supposed self-made billionaire when actually his father most certainly helped him uh, start in life with a few millions and more than just a few millions. Um, the New York Times was reporting that by age of by the age of eight, eight years old, he was already a millionaire in dollars. Um, I think that helps. And also, the investigation has shown that Trump has evaded taxes to the tune of several hundred millions of dollars. But that's a separate debate. Yeah, as Trump would have said, that makes him smart not a uh, criminal right so he evaded taxes so he was clearly smart in doing so and of course with with the age of eight he was a self-made millionaire by then how self-made what do you mean by self-made in that case yeah, isn't isn't it called a self-made millionaire if you earned all the money through honest work uh, yourself and hard work yes yeah, absolutely work. ever, and since, and ever just, since he was a baby it just goes to show that trump is above us mere mortals and, he's a winner yeah and even with eight, he already worked hard. I, I am sure of it. Yeah, that's, that's it. That's life. So I have I, to... I'm, I'm, you're going to make me cry. Oh, I can like the baby. Maybe I need to cut out the most emotional parts of this intro then. So our motion today, just to repeat it, because we might have forgotten it by now. <laughs> Inheritance money should be capped. And by the flip of the coin, because we decide our sites randomly, and this in this case, Sebastian used again a real physical coin. So we are not trusting technology anymore. It's real physics at play. Um, so this time I'm against the motion and I go second which makes you the positive guy of this debate and uh, the first one to start the race. That's correct. And you forgot to mention that the flip of the coin, since I do this at distance, I even recorded on video so there would be no controversy on the results of the flipping, flipping of the coin. This is a very important aspect of this podcast. The, flip of the, uh, the flipping of the coin is such an important aspect of it. Uh, thinking of it, how would we make sure that you haven't flipped the coin like a million times and just sent me the one take that, that you decided is the right one? Because the video was already maybe two or three minutes long because I'm so lame at flipping a coin that I would not have redone it a million times. I have better things to do. Right, you lost it one time by flipping it. <laughs> like, and the I flip of the coin said, ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Unfortunately, we cannot release this video because on the video I was half naked. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Pictures the in top my part head. Pictures naked, in my head. Obviously. Yeah. Pictures in my head. Yeah, that's... <laughs> You're still traumatized. Yeah. See how I, can in I try to influence you? And, 
I use every technique possible at my uh, disposition so that and every technique possible that I can use to try and make you feel uncomfortable and and not focused enough. I will try to get back my composure while I listen to your first two minutes. Let's get started. Okay, let's do this. Sebastian goes first and argues for the motion. I'll start by stating the obvious. Inheritance money creates inequality at birth. This is by design. Now, here's the thing. When we talk about capping inheritance money, that does not mean taxing everything, but to make things more reasonable. And defining what is reasonable is the tricky part. So let's talk numbers right away to avoid making this debate too theoretical. And if you, even if you don't like maths, um, it should be fairly simple. We can consider any of the following uh, when we talk about capping inheritance. It could be taxation. Let's say we can tax it at 10, 20, all the way to 50 or 60 percent. Uh, it could be a cap, and in, indeed a, 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 an actual uh, hard limit. Let's say not more than a hundred thousand U.S. dollars for people in the U.S. Uh, and that can adapt to the various wealth of every country. Or it could be a percentage of the parents' assets. You can say maybe you know anything ten percent of the assets above a million dollars or above a hundred thousand uh, dollars would be able to be uh, transmitted. The problem by not capping is that rich families create oligarchies. They lobby for their own interests. And these small populations, these small groups, become very, very powerful. And equality just increases between the less wealthy and the very wealthy. And of course, you will tell me that the rich people would uh, just give away most of their money before they die, so they don't have to go through these taxation schemes, like inheritance taxation. And the solution is what exists currently, right? You have taxes on gifts. You cannot give money in most countries to your children without being taxed. Uh, and you can, we can talk about the legal aspects, but this is not the point of the debate. There's one more thing. Inherited wealth demotivates the recipients. And as a result, they would put less effort into getting trained, getting educated, or even having social skills because you just have this flow of money and you can look around you, maybe among wealthy friends, uh, if you have some, whether they are maybe the best uh, examples. And you have exceptions, granted, but are they the best examples of people who really try hard in doing something meaningful in life? Now, I have more examples and more things to say afterwards. But in short, I think we have enough reasons as to why inheritance money should be kept. Now, it's Dirk's turn. Let's hear it. So this is one of these arguments sparked by the idea that the wealthy are bad for society and that they just hoard money instead of sharing the general wealth. Because actually, I do think none of us really think of their own inheritance if they talk about capping inheritance money, if they talk about taxing it, or at least not to the same extent. It's easy to talk about how Trump shouldn't have evaded tax, but it's harder if it's the house that your granddad built and wants to hand you. Newsflash, even if it is such a big wealth. Big wealth usually means big investment in companies owned by the rich or in funds that then also invest in the broader economy. So it's not exactly the same as the money being just in the hands of individuals and gone for everyone else and for society, as you make it sound, because rich people do something with that money. They are not putting it into the basement to take a swim every day in it. They give it to a bank and the bank's business is to bring in interest. So bringing in interest only works if you invest it somewhere. So it's it's taken somewhere. And if you have enough money to invest big in a big vision, then you get companies like Tesla, you get corporations like Google and all these things that are fueled by the ability to really make big money and get rich. And that's one of the main drivers for our economy. So I would say capping inheritance would limit that ability. It would make investments smaller. And overall, it's not as healthy to the economy as you make it sound. Next up, Sebastian. Let's hear his rebuttal. Let me clarify one thing. I certainly did not say that being wealthy is a bad thing. And being wealthy is great if that's your goal as an individual. That's not a problem for me at all. The question is, should that wealth be given away in unlimited ways 
to your children after your death? And that's the question I still maintain, and for the reasons I have stated and the reasons I will go on afterwards, that indeed that inheritance money should be capped. And I think, uh, Dirk, and forgive me for saying this, but I think you're confusing two things here. One is the transmission of capital, the transmission of wealth from one generation to another, with what do you do with that money? The reason why you may have given the money in the first place to the bank to invest it on your behalf is a separate discussion. The money that would be taxed because we cap it, inheritance would not just disappear. It just doesn't go into vapor. Uh, it would go to the state. And the state can also invest it on the behalf of the entire society to make a more equal uh, system. And the state is not some separate entity. It's us. It's everyone. And we decide in a, in a, in a group way what is be better for the entire population rather than a few individuals who will inevitably lobby for whatever is useful for their own interests. Let me provide a, a more of a cynical viewpoint here. Americans and most Europeans are living beyond their means. That's both at the state level and at an individual level. People might go through credit card debt or the state is using more money than it actually receives through taxes. We don't say this much, but states right now and even in the developed world are bankrupt. They spend more than they actually do have. And how does this work today? Well, as you know, interest rates have been very low for the past 10 years. So it's very easy for these rich countries to borrow money because other countries trust us, us rich countries, to give back the money. But guess how the states get their money? It's by taxes. And these taxes come from us, the people. The state doesn't tax you just for the sake of taxing you. It's indeed to invest, to your point, to invest in building schools, in building roads. Here's what would happen if you give all the money or you don't tax the money to private sector companies or, or private individuals, they would build roads to go from their home to their school or to whatever location they want to go to. So this is the whole point of the state, being able to average things out and make things more reasonable for everyone. I want to share some personal experience here. I did not inherit because my parents are still alive, but even if they pass away, the little money that would be transmitted to me is not necessary. Here's the thing, well, many, thing, many things in life made me very lucky. For instance, when I went to live in London as a child or working for Google, it's part luck, part hard work, which has already given me this head start in life, at least from a financial standpoint, as opposed to others, or even access to cultural things or travel. Do I need this extra push that would be completely not, uh, that would be not uh, something that I would have deserved? It's just because my parents would be rich? And this is something that another person would not have the same luck. So this is why overall, I do think inheritance money should be capped. I'm not saying to tax it completely, but should be capped to make things more reasonable for everyone and more just. Dirk, let's hear his rebuttal. See, here is where we disagree. You basically say that the state could invest the money better than the individual could. Now, I argue there is a certain level of competence and knowledge required to amass such a wealth and to maintain it. There are many examples where it just took one or two generations to lose the wealth. So it's not even a thing that's lasting forever, no matter how much inheritance is passed on. And I say as long as the individuals have that competence, it may very well be better competence and better spent money than the redistributing government could uh, possibly accomplish. And we have many examples of this. There are many investments done by the government that are just not nearly as fair, not nearly as effective and not nearly as well spent as an individual uh, using that inheritance money might have done. Now, you talked about fairness and I have a fairness argument to make too. The money that's made by your parents and your grandparents, guess what? That had been subjected to taxes already. So they worked for this. They pay taxes. They pass it on. And you will even pay additional taxes on top of that. So why is it fair then to cap that money and make that an additional tax on top of all of this? If you earn that money and you have it in your family and you wish to give it away to your children, you should be free to do so. It shouldn't be subjected to an additional tax and no one should judge whether or not that is fair or not fair. Yes, your children will have an unfair advantage. They might as well lose it. Why is there a need for governments to step in and make a change there? 
Last not least, yes, I mentioned passing on money to banks. And I mentioned that for a very specific reason. Because the whole discussion about inheritance capping is a discussion driven by envy, basically. And what I try to tell you is that the money is not disappearing. The money, even if it's controlled by individuals who got it through inheritance, will be sitting in funds, will be invested in companies, will then be spent in terms of salaries and purchase goods. So it's still in society. It's not disappearing anywhere. So no, we shouldn't cap it. We should keep it. It's fair to keep it. And I'm not convinced that governments are better uh, ambassadors for any larger amount of money than individuals are. Final statements. Sebastian, let's hear it. It's funny that you say the money has already been taxed because you imply in such a way that there should be no tax whatsoever, which is even more extreme than what most states are doing. Um, here's the thing. You're saying competence to generate wealth is is very unique and it's maybe better than the state Does, is that competence is as these brains to generate wealth something that you can inherit my my take is that it's not right you don't inherit the brains of your parents uh, as much as you inherit their wealth you may be dumber or more intelligent actually so i don't i don't think this is a, a case for debate talent is everywhere talent is everywhere in this world opportunity is not by taxing inheritance money and capping it uh, you provide that opportunity in a more fair and just way. Because just as you mentioned, people are envious. People are emotional. We are human beings, whether we like it or not. It does not matter that this is rational or not. The point is, anger will drive people to go to revolt, to rebel, if inequality at birth, which is what's happening, increases over the lifetime of every individual, then people will feel more and more estranged from their fellow human beings who live in a compound because they're worried about being having their wealth being stolen or taken away. So it is important to regulate uh, how we want to organize society and not make people go crazy because this inequality just rises. So yes, inheritance money should be capped. We have not discussed by how much, but I think it should certainly be capped to reduce inequality that we see keep on increasing for the past century. Uh, everywhere on the planet. Dirk. Yeah, you keep beating home that point about fairness and that people are envious and that it's just not okay to have a head start. But guess what? If I work my whole life to make a ton of money, buy houses, cars, ships, what have you, just for the pure purpose to pass it on to my offspring why am i not free to do so why is it more fair to cap it and tax it than giving me the freedom to pass it on now i'm not saying there shouldn't be any tax at all i'm actually fine with some taxes even though you're right in principle those taxes are unfair and i do think the current taxes are maybe just enough why should we do something on top of that by capping why not just stick to the system we already have What's your real take on that, Dirk? I do think there should be a healthy tax. That's my that's my real take. But I also think it's unfair to just cap it. I maintain the position that it shouldn't be capped, but I also see it as an income to the next generation. And if it's an income to the next generation, then it's fair to tax it. I would say, uh, if you would have worked for the money, what would be the tax that you pay for it? I think in some countries, it's, it's, it's probably even even more than if it were just regular income. Yeah, might be. Uh, in France, it's certainly the case that you'd pay actually more taxes uh, above a certain threshold. What about what about your attitude today towards your own children? So I'm not I'm not building up significant wealth for them, if that is a question. But of course, they do have a head start, and the head start they have is they they grow up in a in a in a household where you have books, where you have access to the latest technology. They can pick the university and school they go to. Of course, we're gonna support them finding their first apartment and all these things. So they have a head start and an unfair advantage over others in the same cohort, I would say. I do think these aspects add up, but what we are not doing is we are not having a significant fund where we try to save money for the for the case we die so they have uh, a wealth to start off. They have to work for their money themselves once they're out of the house, I would say. Okay, okay. 
Yeah, I, I, I was wondering where we were get you where where you were getting out because indeed what you do when you're alive is slightly different from what you're planning uh, after you're passing away. In fact, it's funny that we talk about this because coincidentally, and it was not linked to this debate, but because I read something else on this very same topic, I wrote my my very first will over the weekend oh, wow. because I am not married and I don't have children. Mm -hmm. um, I actually did not realize that Swiss law uh, would actually plan things in a specific way unless I write a will which allows me to use part of my assets and I want to I want to be able to re redistribute things according to at least what I think is fairer than what Swiss law is anyway so back to your point yeah I, I just was curious about what you were planning in, in your case but would you have a problem in that case that like for others who who may have more wealth or significantly more wealth are now planning this to give such a massive start to their children that would you, would you do you really have a problem that this would be capped? Because we didn't talk about numbers, and I try to I try to steer away from talking about numbers too much because I wanted to talk more about the philosophy around it. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, we can debate forever, like saying, "Hey, what is an acceptable number?" Like I'd say, I'm, that's why I'd rather have a discussion with you now. But I'd say above a hundred million dollars, like how how does it make any sense to not tax a hundred percent everything above a hundred million dollars? You know, otherwise you're just you're securing the you're securing the, the the wealth and the lifestyle of of multiple generations after you. Is that really again? I know it's the the, the word that you you picked it upon, but is that really fair? Is that really the kind of society we want to build? So you asked me. I think the numbers a hundred million. Do you really you, do you not think that it would be a problem to tax a hundred percent? That you ask. There are two questions that I like to answer separately. But so the first question you have: Would I have? a problem with that of course since i'm not subject to earning a hundred million dollars well who cares uh, for all i care you can cap it at one million or oh no while we added why not cap it at five hundred thousand? the statement that you make though uh, i'm not sure it's really accurate because those wealthy people don't have those 100 million just in the bank account and then it's passed around they they usually have a whole whole set of corporations, companies, investments, uh, funds, what have you, flying around, and that is being passed on. In case of the Trumps, it was buildings and the whole companies uh, that they structured around that. And I have no problem with that. Just be kept as it is and passed on, because well, markets will sort this out. So if at some point you're making sound decisions, it may just grow. If you're being stupid, there are people that lost more than a hundred million dollars in a very, very short time frame. I do think Mark Zuckerberg could tell you a story or two about how he lost 150 million just, I do think, a couple of weeks ago. Two things. I, I don't think the fact that it's cash or not cash is a problem because the, uh, the let's say it's a stake in a company, the stake could be owned by the state and the state can decide to either sell that stake or not. Uh, you could you just look at the stock price or, or the evaluation, the assessment of how much that, that that stake is worth. Yeah, but that will be made on different based on different criteria than the person owning that company would pick. And uh, sometimes sometimes he would just say, "Oh yeah, we need more money to, I don't know, build that nice uh, kennel over there. So let's just kill that company over there uh, where we happen to own stocks in." I'm not convinced that a state is the best entity to make investment decisions. That that I maintain. But do you believe it's it's a it's a better investment decision by someone who inherits the wealth will have better business sense? That money will continue to generate tax money. If you have one hundred million dollars sitting somewhere passed on as a a set of investments in companies and then continues to work for that uh, for that person's wealth. This money generates taxes. This money generates uh, um, work. This money generates I'm not, I'm not uh, debating consumption. That. If the state owns the company, it still gets the taxes and the stake in the company. But then, then you're basically making an argument for uh, capping it at zero. That's an interesting question. Possibly, but that's why I don't want to debate the numbers. How about we don't don't have any inheritance system? You have to pass it on while you're alive, or everything goes to the state. Possibly, maybe, but I, I, I think, yeah, maybe we should have done this. Maybe something more extreme. I don't know. Of course, then you move the goalpost. You move the debate from debating inheritance to debating gifts. Yes. Yeah, it's the same debate. Yeah, it's the same. So, okay, so we keep it to that. Yeah, I, I may. I, I should have maybe made the, the points more strongly, but let's say 
you have a, you know, a few billionaires on the planet and multimillionaires. If you do count, if you do take a few billions of, of euros, we're talking about billions, the wealth that they have accumulated. And instead of this going to the to children, I know the money's not lost completely, but my point is our states are bankrupt and we don't say this enough. They're completely bankrupt. Like thankfully a state is not governed like a private sector company, because in this case we would be indeed completely dead. But we do spend way more than what than what taxes do collect currently. So we have a problem. We have a structural problem. And this is true at the state level, but in some countries like the UK or the US, even people at the individual level spend more than they actually earn. So I, I think we just this this delusion that this money is like in the, is not needed. So even that's why I said it's a cynical standpoint. Uh, so there is there is one thing that's very philosophical, and I don't think we can untie that knot, and it's probably hard to grasp. But if you if you look at it, the whole money system is based on imagination and trust. And what you're basically saying is there is money somewhere, and if I could just take it and put it someplace else, if you turn that to the extreme, hey, why not? Why not taking uh, taking out all the banks and all the big corporations of that equation too? and just restart everything and start with the money level that we had before what was what would that be exactly and so that the whole the whole money system practically depends on companies and individuals moving up the net so you have those clusters where it feels like there is a lot of money i do believe you might even do harm if you take out all these high wealth individuals that you mentioned what that takes away is basically the visible pools of money that everybody believes exist and if you take out those visible pools of money they there is no money that's just numbers in computer systems so where do you distribute take them to um, i do believe we are not we are not good in distributing the goods that we produce and the services that we produce on that we completely agree but i'm not sure that we can change that by changing that wealth distribution that's a good point i mean that's a good point And back to an earlier point that you mentioned, and just thinking just a bit more right now as we're discussing, I'm thinking that maybe, maybe the cap or the 100% tax should be on non-productive assets, cash, fancy cars, real estate, which is not productive, right? It's like an investment in a company, right? And you could say, you know what, if, 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 your, if your wealth is not invested in productive economy, then it's going to be taxed at 100%, simple as that. Because people, they fancy luxury cars, they fancy nice houses, but this is not productive, as you know. It's just a piece of concrete on a yep. piece of land. Maybe it has a few servants and slaves and what have you. <laughs> We don't say slave in our modern economy, but... Yeah, slaves, like slaves like servants, no. Uh, yeah, I know what you mean. All right, that was it. That was today's debate. Should we cap inheritance money? Yes. Yes? No. <laughs> no. I do think, but I do think our our listeners may have their own arguments for or against. So we are eager to learn. We are eager to hear your position. Please go to the webpage to debate.net and vote. So you can leave a mark there if Sebastian or I convinced you. Uh, and we are having our little debating game here where we look into the dashboard to see who's ahead. And right now, Sebastian leads with one debate. And I do think that's close enough for me to be competitive. And yeah, if you have any other arguments, if you feel like we got something wrong, if you want to discuss, argue, debate with us, feel free to do wherever you're uh, out there in the internet. We have comments on the blog. You find us on Facebook, Twitter and what have you. And uh, yeah, please don't be a stranger. I thought Facebook was dead. Well, that's our next debate. <laughs> wow, such a good transition for our next debate. Thank you for listening, everyone. And I think for both of them, you're against and both of them, you're second. Okay, well, that's easy enough. I'm again being against something is my natural predisposition and being second is uh, the thing you like most right <laughs> <laughs> so I'm whatever you say I can come second and say and it's still wrong <laughs> I'm against this <laughs> all right um, I'm Dirk Crimson I approve this message so that that means that I'm doing the intro that's correct
I really hate being the first one to start because then I, I only have one minute to respond to anything. I really hate it. Oh my god. Um, all right, let's go with one minute. Shit. I wrote, a, I will, I wrote even more things, man. Wait. Oh, you keep the best part, the, the most juicy part, as you like to use that word, juicy, for the for the for your three minutes. Oh God! All right, all right, sixty seconds. I'm gonna try to keep to that. 